um, discussion, I want you to give a brief highlight about the topic that we have for today. Thank you very much for this wonderful topic. So the top topic before us is developing a world changing ideas, developing a world changing ideas. And to be able to understand this topic, we can read from Genesis chapter one, verse 26. So in Genesis chapter one, verse 26, the Bible says that, and God said, let us make man in an image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea let them have dominion over everything we have created so that was the original intent of god for creating us to have dominion and dominate every aspect of his creation so with this mindset of god everyone born into this life has a part to play or has an aspect to contribute to, to change our world for a better place. And that is why in this discussion, we want to look at some of the ways we can change our world, some of the ways we can develop ideas that can transform lives, ideas that can change the lives of our other people around us. So by the end of this discussion, we hope to help our audience to have a world-changing idea mindset that their mindsets will be transformed, their mindsets will be regenerated, their mindsets will be repositioned, repositioned for the impact of the world and not just for themselves. You know, in the past, the world could not make progress because we lacked people who had the mindset of transforming other people. We had people who were selfish and were self-centered. Such people could not change the lives of many people. But if you look at the lives of people like Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Henry Ford, Robert Goddard, Winston Churchill, John Wesley, these are people who lived to change the world by an idea. Some changed the world through the idea of science like Thomas Edison. Some changed the world through the idea of faith like John Wesley. Some changed the world through the world uh, through, through um, ideas like, like Albert Einstein. You know, so all these people, we learn from them and by learning from them, we will get the understanding that the world is not just a place to enjoy, but a place to live it a better place than we came to meet. Thank you very much. So this is the highlight of our discussion. And I believe that I've been able to give a short summary of it. Thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma, for the highlight. And um, we can begin to like kind of like go into some questions that we have for you today. So um, looking at our topic for today, can you tell us a little bit about how like to generate ideas that can change the world. You know, you mentioned names, these people did things that impacted generations. In their generation, like they did these things, but today, the generation we have today is still benefiting from what they did. So can you talk to us, talk to our, the people that we have today about ideas that, how, do, how to generate ideas that can change their world? Thank you very much, Dr. Sarah, for this question. You know, these people were able to change their world because they first believed that their existence on Earth matters. They believed that the Earth should benefit from them. Some of them also wanted to make an impact for their name to forever remain or to be remembered in the world. So number one, to be able to develop a world-changing idea, the first thing to do is to renew your mind. You need to have a renewed mindset. Everything begins with the mind, okay? Ideas come from the mind. So the mind should be renewed in such a way that you believe you are a solution and not part of the problem of the world. 
So once you know that you are born into the world for a solution, irrespective of where you were born, you begin to think about how you can contribute to make impact in this world. So number one is just to renew your mind, reposition your mind as an impact maker in the world instead of just being part of the living. The second point is to begin to recognize the problems of the world. There are so many problems, there are so many questions that are seeking for answers. There are so many problems in our world that are seeking for solution. You know, when COVID came in 2019 and 2020, you could see how people were researching, trying to find a solution to that problem of the world. And, and, and that tells you that to be able to develop a world-changing idea, the second point is to, to identify a problem, to identify a problem. The third point after identifying a problem is to believe that there is a solution. Even if you don't have the solution at hand, just believing that there is a solution, you know, will help you. I read about a scientist who went to class in Columbia University and he slept. So the, the mathemat is a mathematician. So the, the lecturer put a question on the board and told the class that nobody can solve this question. You know, there were two problems in mathematics that even the whole world could not solve. So that the, the, the lecturer was talking about it. And then, but this guy was asleep. So when he woke up, the class was over and he saw the two questions on the board. He thought that those questions were answer, were assignments. So he wrote it in his book and went to libraries. I mean, researching in many, this is a true story. You know, there was no internet, there was no chat GTP to, I mean, to search for the answer. So he was just reading and trying, experimenting, trying so many ways. After many days, he was able to solve one of the questions. Then he went to class and told the lecturer that, look, I've been able to solve only one of the questions you put on the board. And the lecturer said that, no, I wasn't giving you an assignment. It wasn't meant to be an assignment. I was just telling them that these are two questions that nobody can solve in the world and not even the best mathematician can solve. And the guy said, no, I thought it was an, it was an assignment. So this is my solution. He explained it, they called for professors, he explained his point to them, and everybody believed that that was the answer. The lesson we can learn from this guy's story is that he did not hear the lecturer say that the question is not solvable. He did not hear, he did not hear it, he was, he was asleep. So when he woke up and he didn't have any, any negative mindset about the question, he was able to develop an answer for it. The key lesson to us is that when we identify the problems around us, we shouldn't entertain negative mindsets. We shouldn't entertain the mindset that this is impossible. Nobody can solve it. Look at where you are coming from. Look at your background. Look at the way you speak. Look at the way, you know, you answer questions. You are not smart. You know, sometimes growing up, depending on where you are born, you could be surrounded by negativity, negative, you know, mindset, negative thoughts. Sometimes some people can even insult you that you are this, you are ugly, you are not smart and all those things. But then if you are not, if you ignore the environment, the negative influence of the environment, as long as we define a problem as a problem that can be solved, there is a way out and we will be able to solve such problems. So these are just some few steps to help us to develop an idea that can change the world. Finally, when looking for a solution to the problems we have identified, our mindset should be connected to making an impact beyond our immediate environment. So if our focus is beyond our family members, our focus is beyond ourselves, our focus is beyond the money we want to put in our pockets, our focus is beyond our family, our church, our country, and we look beyond the world. You know, look at the world today. It's now more of a global place. 
you know, many people say global village. That is, this is when we see the reality. You know, Dr. Sarah is in US at the moment, I'm in Ghana, but we are connected and we are having this discussion. So it tells you that from today, anything we want to do, whether a business, whether an organization, whether a ministry, anything we want to do, we should have the global mindset. We should have the world in view. And if the world is our focus beyond our immediate environment, we will be able to develop the idea that can also be, be applicable in other parts of the world. Thank, Thank you very you. much, um, Mr. Nguma, for sharing this wonderful insight with us. And as you were talking, you um, did mention certain things. Uh, and I do like how you mentioned sometimes you have to protect your mind. You know, the, the mind is such that the information, it processes whatever information that you feed it. So sometimes you have to protect your mind for your mind to be able to generate like you need not to limit the mind, be, being mindful of the information that you feed your mind with. And this include like negative comments, like discouragement, sometimes like certain comments or certain things people say can even like prevent you. It kind of like be a stumbling block towards what you can even do. And like you also mentioned, sometimes you have to think beyond yourself, yeah. because if you want to meet the needs of the world, you have to think beyond yourself. If you want to meet your needs, you can think only about yourself, right? You can yeah. be self-centered and you, yeah, you're right. You're going to make it and get what the things you need, whatever you need in life, but then you might not affect any life around you. So to be able to make impact in the world or generate ideas that can affect gen like generations you have to think beyond yourself. You need to see the world beyond yourself, beyond even like your family, beyond even your friends. And as you think like beyond yourself, you'll be able to even, like you said, one of the things is identifying a need in your society or community. When you begin to think beyond yourself, you're able to see the world even from a different perspective. You're able to see the needs of your world. So thank you very much, um, Mr. Nkoma, for sharing this wonderful thought with us. So I want you to tell us today, You, I think you mentioned one of these factors, which is sometimes negativity, discouragement, and everything, which can limit people from like being able to generate ideas that can benefit society, that can benefit generations. So I want to I want you to talk to us today. What are some of the factors that limit the creative cap capacity of the youth of today? Thank you very much. So as I mentioned, some of these negative um, comments we receive from the environment can generate low self esteem. So some of the youths or some people today do not have that positive self-esteem about themselves. And with a low self-esteem, you may not be able to try anything. You may not be able to have confidence to, to articulate your potential. So low, low self-esteem has become one of the key factors limiting creativity today. You realize some people when, when, when they live abroad, when they come down to Africa, they have confidence. That is self-esteem. They have very good self-esteem about themselves. And because of that, they try two, three things. And before we realize, they have created something that is providing a solution to our problems. So just believe that whatever God has put in you is precious. And nobody can define you. The comment of somebody will not define you. The comment of a teacher will not define you. If a teacher is saying that you are not smart, it doesn't mean you are not smart. That is his own perception. Okay? So you don't have to be limited by what people are saying. So one of the things that can limit creativity is low self-esteem. Another factor of, of, of creativity limitation is limited understanding of your potential. Limited understanding of your potential. If you don't know what God has put in you, think about it. God said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Image and likeness. So God created the whole world. There is an aspect of creativity in us. 
the creativity that is in God that made him create the world, the same creativity is in you. I was amazed when God said about the people who were building the Tower of Babel. God said that the people is one and nothing can be restrained from them. You know, I, I this this last month and some part of this month, I've been meditating on, on this. This was at the beginning of life, you know, at the beginning of creation. These people could build a tower. Even today, when you see a story building and you think about the creativity of a story building, those living in the cities, those in New York, you see the skyscrapers and you imagine how they were able to build those tall buildings. This is 21st century. But many years ago, 2000 years ago, I mean, I mean, 2000, even like a million years ago, some people decided to build a tower to God. And God said it was possible. So limited understanding of the potential God has placed in us can also be a factor to limit the creativity of young people today. Then another factor that limits people is the factor of quick reward. Many young people deserve, I mean, for quick reward. They just want to see what is good and needs for them. If it will benefit them, if it will have, I mean, some pleasure for them, that is where their focus is. But if you look at these people, I mentioned their name, Albert Einstein. If you look at Thomas Edison, Henry Ford and Co., these people were not selfish. These people were not self-centered. You know, their focus was not on themselves. Their focus was to do something to make an impact in our world. So desire for quick reward is also another factor or, or, of limiting creativity in, in our days. Another factor is, is, is the failure to leverage on divine help. You know, when you go on social media, you know, some people are talking against divine, you know, help or divine assistance. Some of them may, may make mockery of those who pray, but they've forgotten that the, the, the divine aspect of life cannot be relegated to the background. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, the Bible says that delight yourself in the earth. The Bible says that in all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. We should trust in the Lord with all our hearts and we shouldn't lean on our own understanding. When we acknowledge God, he is able to direct our path. So one way that people are limiting their creativity is their little you know, advantage they have without, I mean, that is not having God in, in their decisions, not having God in what they want to do. They are so much focusing on science, focusing on, on, on logic. But if we, in addition to all that we can do with our strength, can also rely on God for his strength, rely on God for ideas, we'll be able to develop a world-changing idea that will change lives forever. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma. And these are very, like you met, you kind of like highlighted all the important things. And like you said, I think you already mentioned this, looking beyond yourself. You need to look beyond yourself. If you don't look beyond yourself, you are the world you will see. You are the world you will see and you meet the needs of that world. You can be rich you can be famous and everything but then it will all be limited to you because you have defined your your world which is you so it is important that if you want that your the impact you want to make in this world to go beyond yourself you have to look beyond yourself you have to define your world beyond yourself it's very important. I do like that. And you mentioned not leveraging God's um, intervention, God's wisdom. He has the knowledge. He knows the mysteries, everything. He knows how to go about things. He created the world and he has the knowledge, understanding everything, man seeks everything. God knows it. So like not, like you said, not, re not relying too much on logic and those things. Also, we can approach God with everything, whatever we want to do, we can approach God. God can give us direction, directions on what to do and everything. And, like, and you also mentioned about quick results, like um, the desire to have like quick results. Sometimes people might say, 
okay, um, there's this kind of like thinking, like stereotype. People people want to kind of like follow the stereotype. They want to just follow what maybe is the trend that is already there. People don't want to be innovative, right? Because people are kind of okay. It requires so much hard work. You have to be patient. You have to um, you have to wait. You have to do this. No, I don't think. Let me follow the trend that is so easy and everything. So sometimes, so sometimes you have to be like kind of like have the calmness to be able to work the process out. You don't need to be quick. That I need a quick solution and everything. So thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma, for sharing these wonderful insights with us. And again, I want you to today. I want you to share uh, with us what are some what is what are some of the standard process or generating ideas that can change our world. And I, when you were talking, you, men, you mentioned the mind, the power of the mind. So as you talk about this, I want you to touch a little bit about the power of the mind, how you can renew your mind, how you can expand the creative um, ability of your mind. So can you please talk a little bit about that? Okay, thank you very much for this question. So the mind is something God put in us and science has been able to define that the mind is not limited, okay? The mind can be expanded or the mind can stretch itself and look for a solution. And that is how God created us. In fact, his original intent, I believe, is that he wanted us to continue in his creation. So to be able to continue in the creation of God, he has given us this mind, which can be stretched, which can, can bring out a solution out of nowhere. So to renew your mind is just to believe that it is possible. I don't know if this has occurred to you before, Dr. Sarah, you know, something that initially you thought was not possible, but all of a sudden, when you change your mind, and began to think that it was possible, you were able to do it. Can you share with us any experience? So I think I've talked about this before, like I've shared something related to this before, how when, when I was um, in college, when I was doing my um, undergraduate degree, I was, um, I was a math student and I, I didn't like programming programming was something that I always tried to run away from so one of the courses that it was not a compulsory course it is and it was an elective that we was we could do uh, was computational math and computational math actually involved um programming like using python and those things programming language and this so I remember I registered for the course and I went to the class so in the first class I when I went, I I I kind of like experienced the content of the uh, of the course, and after I think it was either after the first class or after some few classes, I just went to drop the class. I I told myself that programming is not for me, <laughs> so everything that has to do with programming, I had to run away from it. So when I when I went to South Africa to do my masters, and it was a one year masters degree, which was like very intense. So one of the, some of the things that we had to do was um, programming. We did a lot of programming. We had to now, we had to use different, now I was faced with not only Python, but different programming language. We had to use Python, Julia, MATLAB, like our so many different languages. And there's no excuse. It's either you do it or you go home. <laughs> you have to choose one. And I, I I didn't want to go home. I, I wanted a degree. So it was more like I was pushed. Like he said, the mind is not limited. Sometimes the like the comfort of life makes us to like um constrain our mind or choices. When we have choices that can give that can give us an escape for maybe the maybe you have like several options or choices. And those, some of these choices can give you an escape route for you to escape stretching your mind. We tend to maybe choose the option that maybe we are more comfortable with the option that we might not stretch our mind too much. But in the case where you don't have any op options and you have only one, you have only one option, 
you 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 kind of like realize that the mind it's so amazing you are you it was stretched like you have to receive and produce so i remember that at, at the end of the one year master's degree i was so surprised i had to do at the end of the um program i had to do a project and i had to do a project using Python, that is the same programming language that was being used in my undergraduate degree that I ran away from. I completed a project using that same programming language. So I, when I, I, I saw that, I was like, this is really amazing. So when I came over to the US to do, to kind of like further my studies, and I, I told my friends that, oh, I'm used to using um, this programming language and everything. So they were kind of, oh, this we use different programming language than the Python. They were, so they were basically like, Sarah, then this would be very easy for you, right? And when I started using those programming, other uh, programming languages, it was quite easy. I was like, so it, these are the things I was running away from, right? If I wasn't pushed, I would have said no programming language for me. Like I will have to kind of like, um run away from it for probably i'm not sure if till for the rest of my life or something yeah. but then <laughs> yeah so i remember i remember my one time my professor asked me to do something for her and it was kind of more like um predicting bond prediction and i had to use those like build that like use the same like python language but in a different like form and everything and when I showed her the result of what I did, she was so impressed. She was asking me, where did you learn this? Where did you learn yeah. this? And, everything. and I was like, okay, is this Sarah? Sarah that ran away from her, like, undergrad, like, Python program, computational math, during her undergraduate degree. So it is important, like, sometimes we tend to lean towards the option that we are comfortable with because I had the option during my undergraduate degree, I had the option I could drop computational math and do some other like course that doesn't involve like programming. That's what I did, right? <laughs> but when you reach the level where you know that this is important, mm -hmm. there's a demand, yes. right? Mm -hmm. There's a demand. So when you reach that level, your mind stretches. You 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 remove every constraint <laughs> from your mind because you don't have the luxury of tolerating those things. So I think, like you said, it's important that we don't limit ourselves by um, constraining our minds on what to do. And sometimes, too, it kind of involves, there, there was also another instance that my professor asked me to do something. I was like, oh, this is too, this is too much. I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure that I want to do this and that. I was giving excuses until I made a step. I took the first step to see what I can do. And when I started a project, it was very easy. So sometimes it is, the mind can constrain us from taking the first step. Sometimes the most important thing is taking the first step. Once you take the first step, that constraint, like it, it's kind of like, it's, it's removed, like, because if you there's this firmness that begins to build up, there is this, confidence that I can do it that begins to build up and everything and before you realize you are able to do it so like I said we shouldn't limit ourselves never limit yeah. your what you can do and God's intervention is there for us always like praying sometimes when you think sometimes when you think that okay this is this is maybe overwhelming that's why we have God when you think this is overwhelming, you can go to God, you can speak to him, and he's there to listen to us as a friend. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Dr. Sarah. So that's very interesting. So that will be, will be one of the first points of the process of generating world-changing ideas. That will be the first you know, item on our list. The next is to be able to shut your mind off distractions and focus on solving the problem. No, don't stop and argue with people and explain yourself to them. Nobody would doubt the results. Nobody would doubt outputs. But anybody at all can, can query an input or an idea by just focus on solving the problem. And when the problem is solved, even the doubters will, will be believers. 
Then sometimes you need to ask questions, ask questions about situations, ask questions about communities, ask questions about families, ask questions about places where you want to make the impact. Because in asking the questions, God is able to help you to develop ideas to be able to solve the problem. When you ask more questions, you are able to understand the situation. You know, the scientists will call it diagnosis. You are able to diagnose the situation and be able to brainstorm for possible solutions. So the, the, the next item is to be able to brainstorm. Just sometimes take time to think. Okay, take time to think about situations. Take time to, to brainstorm for, for possible solution. During this process, the mind widens. This is scientifically proven. The mind expands to be able to create something. When COVID started and people were crying, in my heart, I knew that there would be a vaccine. I knew it. I prayed to support the science, the scientists who were, you know, you know, researching for a solution. And in my heart, I believe that there was nothing impossible. People were dying, but, you know, even though I ran to my village when there was lockdown in Ghana, in my village, I was praying almost every morning, not just for COVID to vanish mysteriously. That, was not, that wasn't my prayer. My prayer was that God should help the, science, the scientists to be able to develop a vaccine. That was my prayer. And when the vaccine was developed, I don't care about what people may say, but I believe that it was part of an answer or it was an answer to prayers. So we need to brainstorm for possible solutions. If you are tracking the, the vaccine process, they developed solutions, they tested it, and some of them failed. They tested with animals and all that. But sometimes we need to develop potential um, solutions, more than one. And, and and see which one could be the best. And by the time you realized, you, you would have developed something that, has, that will become a world-changing idea. Then you need to also understand your immediate target market. You may not be able to affect the entire world at a go. You may start from somewhere, okay? You should be able to identify your immediate target group or a target market. For instance, FOPIC wants to make an impact in the whole world. And we are targeting young people. We are targeting the young professionals or the youth. And, and we believe that once we are able to target young people, help them to make the right choices, help them to love God, help them to make career choices, decisions about life, marriage, and so many things, you'll be affecting the world you know, by and by. By the time we realize these young people will be adults and be making decisions in companies, making decisions in churches, making decisions in families, and then the whole world will be affected. So we need to identify our immediate target group. And once we do that, we'll be able to, you know, to develop a world-changing idea that will help our world. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Nkoma, for sharing this with us. And um, as you were talking, like you did mention about one thing that you kind of like mentioned that came into my mind is connect with people, connect with the world out there. Sometimes you can connect with the people, not necessarily like getting up and going through, your, knocking on every door of your neighborhood. What is your greatest need? What is your greatest need? What is your greatest need? Not necessarily that. You can connect with the world. Like you said, one thing I think through what you were saying is um accumulating knowledge. Knowledge. Like, get to know your, the, your, the world that we live in. Like, read. Read in the area that you want to make the impact with. Identify the needs of people within that area. It could even be, like, you can do data collection, like, to see, uh, to, like, kind of follow, like, through the data. You can be able to make analysis from the data, what is needed. So many things you can do. The most important thing is don't just say that, something is going to happen if you don't make it happen. Don't just say that the idea is going to drop if you are not letting your mind, if you're not expanding the creative ability of your mind. You need, that is very important. I think that is one thing that is very key 
like the mind, like you mentioned, the mind is a very powerful tool. The mind is not limited. And sometimes like we expand our mind by gaining more knowledge, reading more, being able to process more. The more you do that, you 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 increase the creativity of your mind. Your mind becomes more creative. So now you begin to generate ideas and you begin to even ask yourself about where did this even come from? That is because you have built up on the creativity of your mind, the ability for your mind to create things. So it is important that we do that. And you mentioned avoiding distractions. So in this generation, we know that there are so many distractions, especially if you just want to leave. Sometimes maybe somebody might say, I just want to live my simple life and just me make money, be rich, buy what I want, live where I want and everything, right? And maybe like this, I can I cannot like, so maybe such such things can even, maybe they can be distractions and everything, but people might not really care. So I think once you make up your mind that I want to make an impact in my world, I want to generate ideas that um that can shape my world you have to kind of avoid distractions and one of those distraction thing that can even be a distraction is the even desire to just oh live it like just a simple life don't think don't don't think too big don't think, that can be a distraction right don't think too big and there can be people to support you even on that and sometimes the distraction can even things that can distract us from doing the things that we want we want to do maybe when we go to school when we are reading when we are having times with god we need to identify what are some of the things that can um stand in the way of me accumulating more knowledge what are some of the things that can stand in the way of me interacting more with god about what i want to do for my world and those things identifying what can distract you is very important if you're not able to identify what can distract you, you will embrace them because you don't even know that these things are distractions. So it is important that as we desire, as we are we are being desirous of generating ideas to uh, impact our world, we are able to identify the things that can distract us in specific areas. So thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma. You're welcome, Dr. Sarah. Okay, so Mr. Nkoma, I want you to um, talk to us a little bit about um, maybe I have an idea. How do I make the idea big to change my, to impact my world? This is an interesting question. <laughs> Thank you. If you have an idea, I think the best way is to plan. You start with planning, okay? And in planning, we have short term, medium term, and long term. So you should have your your short term plan. What you do, for instance, every month, what you do every quarter, every year, what would you? So within a year, whatever plan you have is said to be a short term plan. So that is within a year. Then you can also have a medium term plan. Maybe after a year, in three years time, you know, what do you want to achieve in three years time? So that is a medium term. Then you have a long term plan. Five years and more is, is a long term plan. So once you begin with planning, if you break down the, the original idea into various pieces, and each piece will be executed within a time frame. You will be able to do something. So after planning, the next thing to do is to is to execute action. Now, many people have ideas in their mind that they are waiting for the best opportunity. They are waiting for the best atmosphere. They are waiting for the best time. You know, I remember when I was doing my national service in Ghana in 2015. I worked with one of the government institutions. That was when we started the Fopic Foundation, you know, helping orphans, going to orphanages to donate food, clothes, and other things. You know, one of the people I was working with, he was my manager during the national service. You know, he's 
he told me he, he almost discouraged me you know he told me that i was too young i don't have anything i'm just a national service person how would i you know have money to give to the poor so i should stop he actually sat me down on this and tried to discourage me he said i should wait finish the service get a job you know make money marry give birth be able to pay my children's school fees and when i know that i now have surplus i have more then i can go into into you know this foundation helping people because you know i said okay thank you very much for your advice you you hear from me later i think two years after i left i mean that organization you know we were going for an outreach and i received a call from him he told me that his 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 daughter was in final year in Legon and was asked to the daughter was doing social work okay and she was asked to work with an NGO for the vacation as part of her coursework but she couldn't find any NGO and she was behind time so is it possible her daughter comes with us for the outreach so that I can give a recommendation that she did her uh, internship or attachment with the Fopic Foundation. And I remembered what she he, he tried to do when, when he saw that we were going for an outreach during the time of my national service. What, what am I talking about? I'm saying that this man did not believe in the vision and he wanted us to, to wait so an appropriate unknown time, okay? And that is the main problem with some other people. They are always waiting for the best time. But one way of developing a winning idea after you have a plan is to start. Once you have a plan and you start with a plan, you believe that with God on your side as a child of God, things will fall in place or things will fall in your favor. Any idea that you have not executed cannot be a winning idea until you start. So in our planning, we should clearly define when to start and what to do at every stage of the idea. Then another thing we need to also do is to define our KPIs, define the key performance indicators, indicators to measure performance whether you are making progress with your idea or not. Okay, so you determine, for instance, the idea could be profit-making or non-profit-making. So you just have to define it from day one, that what is the purpose of this idea? Is it for profit-making or is it for non-profit-making? Okay, if it is not for profit, you need some KPIs to be able to measure your progress. There are so many foundations, so many NGOs that are not making progress because they don't even know whether they are making progress or they are they are achieving something tangible or not because there is no KPI or key performance indicators. Okay, so you need to be able to define that and always measure the actual performance against the key performance indicators. Okay, sometimes, for instance, you may have a key performance or KPI of numerical growth. Okay, numerical growth. So you start something, let's say you start a ministry, you start a foundation, you start a business, you start, I mean, an idea that is meant to make impact in the world. Okay, and one of the KPI is on numerical growth. At the end of a specified period, you can look back and measure yourself against that KPI. If it's for profit making, you can set a profit target, okay, and come back and look at your profit against your KPI to be able to measure your performance. That is very important. Then as time goes on, you also need to brand your idea, brand your, your product or brand your service. So branding has become something you cannot run away from. Whether your idea is profit-making oriented idea or just a non-profit-making idea, 
you should be able to brand your product, okay? You brand the product with a professional logo, a professional name, a professional social media platform, a professional website. These are things we can do to brand our idea to be able to make impact. Finally, we need to commit our ways onto God. Committing our ways onto God, I am repeating it because most people are very busy rushing into the idea, rushing into their plan and, and relegating God. But in whatsoever we do, I want to conclude that in all our ways, we should acknowledge God and he will direct our path. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma. We have, a, um, I think, a, next, a free fire. Can you please go ahead and ask your question? Okay. Uh, good evening, and thanks so much for the opportunity given. All right. So um, I have two questions. And my first question has to deal with um, uh, self-esteem. Uh, uh, Mr. Nkoma mentioned um, uh, low self-esteem and confidence. But I want to know the, the clear line between someone who is confident and someone who is proud. Or should I say someone who is um, boastful or someone who is the first question. And the second question has to deal with um, we all know, we all know, we all have weaknesses. So let's say in, in dealing with someone Let's say you are, you are in a business or maybe on a daily basis. And the persons, persons seem to mention, keep on mentioning the weaknesses of which you are aware. Maybe he might not know. But maybe let's say, let me give a clear example. You'll be dealing with somebody and the person says that maybe you are not all that smart. How should I say all that stuff? So let's say you are not quick to respond. Some people, it takes time for some people to take in uh, maybe information and process it. And they keep on mentioning, maybe you're not smart. I thought you were this uh, university student and you're acting this way. So I want to know, how does criticisms, uh, is, is it, one well, in the first place, is it good for someone to criticize you? And the second one too is, uh, how, 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 is the, how is the difference between criticisms and corrections? If someone says something that is, you, you, you bear to the fact that it's true, that you know that in what you know is, is a weakness you have and you're trying to work on it. How do you put it and how does it also limit your thinking capability or how does it limit your ability to expand your brain? I don't know whether my question is clear. Thank you. Yes, your question is very clear. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. All right, so the first question we ask is on the difference between creativity, uh, the difference between pride and high self-esteem. Okay, pride and high self-esteem. So I would say that the key difference is on um, who the focus is on. The first one, if you look at pride, the focus is on self. The person wants to project something that is just about himself. Then when you look at self-confidence, the focus is you know, on the creator. The focus is on the creator in the sense that you want to project what God has put in you. You want to project your ability, your, put, your, your potentials. And you are not timid. It's not like you don't even believe in yourself. You believe in what God has put in you. And that is why you are confident. And that is why you are able to speak up. That is why you are able to project your potentials. But when you look at someone who, the, the, the line is very thin, but still you can differentiate between the, 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 the one who is exhibiting pride and the one who is just, you know, ha who has high self-esteem. So low self-esteem may say that I cannot do it because Okay, then the because is centered on what he or she thinks of himself because I'm from this village, because English is not my first language, because my accent is not very nice, because so it's just something that is coming from within and it limits the potentials 
or it limits what the creator has put in us. Okay, so with a high self-esteem, you know, this, I sometimes you go to a place, I was on a call with, it, it was an African call where some of the team members were from Francophone countries, but the standard language for the meeting was English. And some of the people from Burkina were, were speaking confidently. Some of them were making grammatical errors, but they were confident enough to speak. And I said, wow, these are people who are making mistakes, but they are not shy to speak. You know, how much more you have gone through like 10 years of grammar in English. So you just have to be confident and also, you know, give out your points. And I was able to also speak. So the point is that when you are exhibiting high self-esteem, you believe that there is something in you that is positive. And that positive thing in you will make impact. When you are exhibiting pride, you think that you are better than someone. You think that everybody should keep quiet and listen to you. You think that, you know, you are the best, you know, that way you 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 limit other people and you want attention to be, you know, cast on you. But the, the, the highest self esteem is just saying that I am good by the grace of God. I am good by my maker. You know, I'm not afraid. You are just like me. We are all human beings. You know, the focus is on the creator. So that is how... I would attempt to differentiate between um, pride and high self-esteem. Then the second question is on weaknesses. You know, when someone points out your weakness, what should you do? Um, um, if somebody tell, someone tells you that you are not smart, smartness is not a weakness. Someone says that you are not smart, then the problem is not from you, but the problem is from the person. Everyone is smart based on what we are measuring our smartness with. Okay, everyone is smart. So the point is that if there is an attitude that should be changed, like going to work late, not responding to emails, not calling back your boss when you miss his call, these are attitudes that can easily change. But it doesn't have anything to do with your natural ability. Smartness is a natural ability, and God has given everyone an unlimited ability, an unlimited, an unlimited ability. So don't let the teacher, you know, make your children feel that they are not smart and they come in and they feel bad about themselves. Okay. The point is that if there is any uh, any character or attitude that has been pointed to you, you should work on it and just change or overcome it, okay? But then your natural ability, nobody can say you, your natural ability is small. Even scientists who believe in IQ and all those things, they may have a point, but then I believe that no one's natural ability is, is limited, is limited. Then the final thing you asked was on um, criticism, okay, and then feedback or something. Okay, feedback could be objective or feedback could be biased, but you just have to you just have to look within the feedback, okay, and see which of them are true and deal with them. Okay, so you just have to know which of them you can deal with and tackle them objectively. But feedback are not supposed to be um, supposed to be detrimental. It's supposed to help us to become better. Okay, sometimes some people see feedback with yes. some people see feedback to um to be like an attack. People are attacking them on what they can do. But then I want you to always look at the feedback from the positive point of view and see how it will benefit you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank you, Thank you so much, too. Thank you.
thank you very much, um, Mr. Nkoma, for sharing your thoughts on the question that um, Ernest asked. So it is important sometimes you just have to be careful how you deal with these things, how you receive feedbacks, how you receive criticisms. You have to just work on it to ensure that at the end of the day, this have positive impact on you. So I think I just want to also add a little bit to what uh, Mr. Nkoma kind of like, we talked about how to make your idea, um, how do you make your idea big? Maybe you have an idea today. How do you make it big? And he kind of like, talked a lot about this. He talked about assessing, evaluating like key performance indicators. And one thing I just, I also wanna to add to this question is that your idea, sometimes some people might have an idea today. It might, it might not look like that idea is gonna um, change the world today, but maybe it might be relevant tomorrow. So for me, one thing I, something I wanna add is, Always be curious about your idea, curiosity, be curious. Be curious about how what you have today can fit into the world, maybe in the next years that are coming. Like, don't just abandon your idea because you think that, oh, this is too small, this is this might not be relevant, or people, a lot of people have probably maybe done something similar or this or that. Don't um, give excuses to push away your idea, curiosity. I think one thing I want to add is curiosity when it comes to the desire, being desirous of changing like the world through ideas or making impact. You always have to be curious. Be curious about ideas. Be curious even about the ideas that have already been generated. It, 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 because sometimes you, you build on the shoulders of others. Right, sometimes you build on the shoulders of I others. Maybe your idea might not necessarily be reinventing the wall. It could maybe just be building on what has already been done. So always be curious about your idea. Be curious about the ideas of others. Keep growing. Keep growing that idea. Keep working on it until you you um until maybe it gets to the time that you know that this is the time for this idea to fit into our world, to change things. So it is very important that we kind of like note these things. And a little bit, I'm, I'm also coming back to a what Ernest asked a little bit about pride and confidence. And I think uh, Mr. Nkoma answered that very well. Being sometimes people even like, when you're confident, people might mistake that as pride and it's good how he differentiated the two. Confidence, being confident is about um, being assured, believing in the ability, the ability that God has given you, the ability he has deposited in you. And like he said, pride is more about yourself. You always want to be at the center. Even when you see talent, talent that are uh, more than yours, you don't want to even acknowledge it. You. I think pride even prevents you from acknowledging the good in others. When pride sets in, you can't even see other talents around you. You can't even acknowledge good things in others. So these are some of the things that, like, um, the traits or certain things when we see, we should note that, okay, pride is setting in. Pride is setting in. I'm always thinking about myself. This project it has to be about me, it has to be about me, mine has to be, my mind has to be the best and everything. You are neglecting all your team members, the contribution, when some people talk, you want to shut them because you think you should always be talking, right? So if we are able to identify, if you're able to identify any, like any of these traits, we can know that pride is certain in being, and we need to also be very, like like very cautious of these things we don't just brush them away with excuses and everything so if there's any question from our audience we want to give the people that we have on the zoom platform to ask questions if the people on the zoom platform want to ask questions okay 
So our time is almost up, but then we do have some few questions. So we want to just run up with um, Mr. Nkoma. So uh, can you tell us a little, a little bit about how to deal with failure on the way of developing a world changing ideas. Sometimes we've heard of stories that people that started, they had to do it several times. There are people that maybe they started once and then it worked. It was just on um, point. It was just the perfect idea. Everything was just in position. There, there, there are also some people that they had to work on it. The people even didn't believe them. They were told to stop, quit, you are wasting your time. This is not going to materialize or come to anything, right? But they still like persisted, and I, I think I'm giving one, one uh, like one um solution to dealing with failure is persistence. But I still want to give Mr. Nkoma the opportunity to talk to us about how to deal with failure on the way of developing a world changing idea. Yeah. So the first thing to do is to know that you are not a first person to to be a failure and failure is not a destination once you define failure as your destination then you have actually failed if failure is part of the journey failure is part of the the is on the road to your success then once you meet the failure you know that you are on track because the road has some may have some portals of failure we are told that Thomas Edison failed a thousand times before he became successful in inventing an electric bulb. We are told that Albert Einstein was very dull. I mean, he, he began to speak at age four. You can read about him, you know, he could not speak until um, 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 year four and he could not read until year seven. His parents thought that he was subnormal one article I read said that his teacher described him as mentally slow, unsociable, and somebody who could not, you know, do anything good. But in 1921, you know, Einstein received a Nobel Award and was regarded as the father of modern physics. So when you read about these people, they will encourage you to, to know that failure is part of life. Henry Ford failed and went back, and, and, and it is told a story is told about Henry Ford, who developed the Ford Motor Company, or who um, and formed the Ford Motor Company, that he failed and went broke five times. He used his money, invented, uh, invested in his, his automobile company. He failed the first time. He failed the second time, third time. He was broke five times until he became successful. And now Ford is a very powerful car. In the world, and you can mention so many, so many people. Christian Chasel failed. You can read about him. He was defeated several times in school. He was defeated in election for I mean so many times before he became the British Prime Minister in in his time. So all these are great men who were you know who failed a, a number of times. If if you are current in Ghana, we have um. Um, the late president Ivan Atamios in blessed memory, he failed in in two thousand. He contested against um the the former president um Kufu. Atamios failed in two thousand and four. You know until two thousand eight he won. And even in two thousand eight, many people did not know that he will win because um Ekufuado almost won, but it's it came to pass that. At the most one. So it's something that if you look at a good father, for instance, in Ghana's politics, he failed in 2008, he failed in 20, um, 2012, and finally he won in 2016. So failure is, is part of the process. But one thing I would say in conclusion is that don't be the cause of the failure. Don't be the cause of the failure. How, I mean, what do I mean? Okay, if you are a lazy person, you can be the cause of, it, of the failure. If you are sleeping whilst you have to be awake, working on the project, working on the research, you may be the cause of the problem. Okay, if you suddenly doubt yourself, you could be the cause of the problem. So make sure that the problem, I mean, the failure is not consciously coming from you. If you are the conscious 
you know, um, 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 cause of the problem. And that, that will really be a big problem. But failure naturally is part of life. Thank you very much, Mr. Nkoma. And I like what you said about ensure that if it's not working, it's not coming from you. Sometimes maybe you might not be doing things right. You might not be putting in the effort and everything. So before you start assessing even what is wrong, like on the outside, you need to start from the inside. Are you putting in the effort? Are you um, doing what is right to get the specific results that you desire? So it is important that we assess ourselves to see whether we are doing the right thing. So thank you very much, um, Mr. Nkoma, and persist. Like, we should always persist, not give up, right? He, Mr. Nkoma mentioned names. These people, if they didn't persist, probably we couldn't have heard about them, right? We need to persist. We need to be desirous, be desirous to curious, be desirous, be curious to see the results of whatever you have started. Be curious to see what you have started change, like the life of somebody. Thank you very much. Our time is almost up. We will give Mr. Nkoma the opportunity to um, talk to, give us a final word, talk to the youth, talk to us, you know, like changing, bringing out an idea that can change um, the world. It, it's, it's evolving, right? It's not, if it's not involving, probably everybody could have like maybe had like that great, that big idea and everything. People might have it, but then to see it materialize, to see it like, um, see the results of that idea, it, it kind of involves effort, it involves um, investment, so many things. So I want Mr. Nkrama to talk to the youth. It's possible that everybody can think and come up with something that can change the world. It's possible. If we want to, it's possible. Give us a final word, like to the youth, to the people we have on our Zoom and various platforms. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarah, for the final opportunity to give a, to give a final word. You know, I, I like the way you put a statement that as you talk to the youths. Back in school, I was told in RME, religious, uh, religious moral studies or something. <laughs> yeah, moral education. And, and we we're told that the definition of a youth is anyone who considers himself to be a youth. There is no universally acceptable age limit or age bracket for youth. So Anybody connected can be a youth. I am I'm a youth. And, and I mean, we are the future leaders of the world. And the future is today. The future we were told of yesterday is today. I remember 10 years ago when you were in high school, we were told of a future that we were waiting for. Now is the day. So my final word is that we should understand that the world has been given to us by God to live in over a period of time. But before we leave this life, we should make an impact. That is number one. Number two, we are learning how to live in this life. We don't know it all. The things we do, even this internet we are using for the, the Zoom was created by somebody. There are many other things that have not yet been created. There are many businesses that have not yet been created. There are many organizations that are not yet created. So just ask yourself, what can you create? The creativity is in you and God has put it in you. Create a business, create an organization, create something from your idea that will make impact in the lives of other people. If your idea can bring people, you know, an, an income, if your idea can make people um, live a better life, if your idea can bring health, to those in, 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 in sickness. If your idea is giving people peace of mind, you know, just feel that you are adding to the solution to the world. So please, from today, my little advice to you and to myself is that what can I do to make this life a better place? 
But once I think about it and the ideas come, please sometimes you need to write down your ideas. It doesn't mean that they should be executed today. So please have a book. You may be, be having your quiet time. You may be sitting somewhere meditating. An idea will drop. Write it somewhere and keep a folder. You can keep an online folder in Google Drive. One day you go back and say, oh, really? This is what I said I'll do. This is what I think and I'll do by this time. Then you are able to track the, 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 the process or the progress of your ideas. Thank you very much. We are not limited. You can make this life a better place for people to live in as we prepare for the kingdom of God. Okay, because there is a kingdom of God, we will not live our life anyhow. People, and people think because of heaven, they will live this life anyhow. No, we believe that we can live a very good life for people to see the glory of God. Then we talk about the life to come, the kingdom of God, to also invite others to know the Lord. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Nkoma, for the final words that you you um, gave us. And I like what at the end you mentioned about living your life for the kingdom of God. You need to bring glory to God. Our lives should bring glory to God. And I think for me, the final word that I want to um, add to what Mr. Nkoma has already said is sometimes we really need to know sometimes some people maybe don't know what like what to study they don't do anything because they don't know what to do people do nothing because they don't know what to do so it is important that like you said we've said God is there to direct us to show us like the way what like so many things once you have been able to once you've been able to talk to God, you should be able to define your purpose and maintain your focus. I think that is that is very important in our generation, being able to maintain your focus. Most of the people we talked, Mr. Nkoma mentioned, these are people that were able to overcome the distraction, the distraction of their time. They stayed focused. They were intentional. They were intentional about achieving whatever it is that they have set their mind on set your mind on something focus on it and god will help us to achieve it if we do not give up and we continue to believe in him thank you very much to um the people we have today those on the zoom platform those on the different platforms we want to thank you for making time to join us today in our purposeful living conversation so again the purposeful living conversation is hosted by the friends of purpose in christ which is a network of friends that seeks to improve the spiritual, the physical, emotional well-being of individuals and to also disseminate information that will improve the career outcomes of individuals in our generation. Thank you very much for joining us. And again, we are going to have our conversation next week, Saturday from 7 o'clock p.m. GMT to 8 o'clock p.m. GMT. So we hope that you do find time, you do make time to join us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and thank you for joining us.